You're watching the Red Zone Sports Show on Fox 5. Southern Nevada comes together to be Vegas strong and show Rebel pride. Straight ahead in the Rev Zone, we'll show you the moving tribute to the victims and the first responders as UNLV steps up to help heal the community. We'll also break down the game against 19th ranked San Diego State. Head coach Tony Sanchez is in studio to talk football and forging ahead. It's time to stand together. A handshake, a salute, and hopefully a smile. It's all in the Rev Zone right now. This is the Fox 5 Rev Zone Sports Show, presented by RC Willie, your home, your way. Good evening. Welcome inside the Rev Zone. Kevin Bollinger alongside UNLV head football coach Tony Sanchez after a, a rough, emotional, long week for everybody in this community and uh, getting back out on the football field last night, I know. Give, give some smiles to, to a lot of people. Yeah, I know we were looking forward to getting back out there with a lot of other people, and it was great to see the community and the you know, way everyone showed up. And a uh, beautiful ceremony before the game, very appropriate for all the things that had gone on. So, uh, you know, hearts are still uh, aching for all the people affected. We're going to have a closer look at that pregame ceremony and further discussion on what has transpired this week a bit later. Right now, though, we want to get in depth highlights of this game, beginning with the first half. Go out there and play your tail off tonight. Go play out four quarters. An emotional pregame ceremony and coin toss where UNLV deferred to the second half. San Diego State had the ball first and the Rebels couldn't get a third down stop. Third and five at the 35. Christian Chapman to Micah Holder and 14 yards and a first. Later in the drive, third and 10 at the UNLV 41. Chapman hits Kahali Warren in the middle of the field for 11 to move the chains again. But on second and goal at the one, the goal line D comes up with another turnover. The fumble recovered by the Rebels and they get the first big break of the game. UNLV though would go three and out. And when the Aztecs got the ball back, they got a big conversion. Third and 19 at the UNLV 32. Chapman finds Holder who gets 20 and a first down. Later in the drive, third and six at the eight. Chapman gets flushed out of the pocket and Roger Mann and Mike Hughes are there to get him wrapped up to the ground. SGSU was forced to kick a 27 yard field goal and it was three nothing. UNLV started at the 25 and went to work. Armani Rogers to Devontae Boyd for nine yards. Then Rogers keeps it himself, gets loose and races 45 yards for a first down in Aztec territory at the 21. The drive would stall and Daniel Gutierrez booted a 35 yard field goal. We were tied at three as the first quarter came to a close. The Aztecs next drive was aided by two pass interference penalties called by officials that put them in position. On second and nine at the 14, Chapman tucks and runs and he weaves his way into the end zone. That would give SDSU a 10-3 lead. UNLV went three and out and on the punt, Quest Truxton sets them up with a 30-yard return. On the first play from scrimmage, Jawan Washington goes 34 yards for the score and the lead had quickly ballooned to 17-3. The Rebels would fight back. Third and seven at their own 23. Rogers over the middle to Brandon Presley, who makes a move and then turns on the Jets, rolling for 54 yards to the San Diego 23. On third and five at the six, Rogers to the corner for Kendall Keys. Watch the great grab for the touchdown. UNLV was back in it at 17 10. Late in the half, San Diego got a John Barron 33 yard field goal, and both teams went into the locker room with the Aztecs up 20 10. 
With everything that went on this week, you have 18 to 22 year old kids here. How comfortable were you with their state of mind as you kicked off this game? Well, you know, we talked about it throughout the course of the week, and yeah, it was an emotional week and a lot of things going on, but you, know, you still you still have a football game to go play. And, you know, and I thought the guys came out and, and did a fairly good job early on. Um, you know, there's some things we could have done. You, know, you talked about the third downs there. But overall, in the first half, I thought we gave ourselves some good opportunities. Uh, the biggest one was at the, end of, uh, at the end of the half when we had a third and one. You've got to convert that. And then the, the half ends with you either driving down to put points on the board or ends with the ball in your hand, so it's 17 to 10. You know, by not converting that and then having to punt, they end up kicking a field goal and you go down 20 to 10. But you're in striking distance, so it wasn't a bad half. Defensively, with those third down conversions that San Diego State, whether it was a play or a penalty that was called, with a team like San Diego State, you can't let them extend drives. That's just something that's going to hurt you all night No, long. you can't give them second opportunities. And, you know, and early on there was a bunch of, you know, third downs converted, but we were able to get the turnover. So it didn't, it didn't hurt result in points. And then uh, later on they had did convert us from third downs, but then we held them to a field goal. So, you know, we were giving some up, kind of playing them and don't break. But after those first couple series, only had three points on the board. Um, but then you gotta, you got to match that offensively. And, you know, they had the ball a lot early on in the game. I mean, when you look at the stat box, you know, those first couple drives, I think we had the ball for eight plays and they'd had the ball for 20 something at the time so third down you got to get your you know you got to get off the field and get the offensive ball back we talked as one of the keys of the game being the battle in the trenches on both sides of the ball and then there were some issues there in terms of uh, the, the line getting handled a little bit yeah you know I mean we, we, we kind of hang our hat and being a, a big physical team being able to run the football and we kind of got our tails kicked up front last night um, it just shows how we got to continue to grow and get better as we build this program uh, they're a good team, but we got to do a better, better job of being more efficient. It wasn't until the second half where Letts was able to break a big gain. Armani had one in the first half on a, on a read zone. But, again, when you get to those third and shorts, your first downs, you, know, you, you can't be gaining one and two yards all the time and continually putting yourself in the second and long situations. Well, let's go to the second half now where the Rebels started out strong but then ran out of steam while the steam engine that is Rashad Penny did his thing. Rebels had the ball to start the second half and started moving. Rogers to Boyd, who gets the catch on the ground to move the chains. Then Lexington Thomas gets some space and takes advantage, churning out yardage, 23 in all, to move the ball to the Aztec 31. But a false start moved them back five, and on the next play, Rogers is sacked for a loss of seven. Third and 19 from the 40. Rogers has nowhere to go and is brought down for a loss, forcing a punt. San Diego got the ball and Rashad Penny took over, going around the left side and racing 36 yards in the UNLV territory, then leveling people on his way to 25 more and keeping the chains moving. Penny capped the drive with a three-yard touchdown run to make it 27 to 10. The UNLV offense just couldn't generate much else the rest of the game. San Diego tacked on two more fourth quarter touchdowns. They remain unbeaten with a 41-10 win over the Rebels. It was a disappointing night. Uh, we came into this game, great expectations. Uh, we had the city behind us, came with great enthusiasm, a large amount of heart. Uh, we really wanted to come in here and uh, give the city what it needed, but um, we just couldn't get the ball moving on offense the way we wanted to. Uh, just an overall disappointment. Um, uh, defense, we didn't tackle, we didn't capitalize on uh, third downs. Um, offense, they struggled to get the ball moving a little bit. We just didn't execute. We had a good plan. Coach put together a good game plan, and we just didn't come out and execute. So the Rebels get the ball to start the second half, and it was really the crucial drive of the game because it started strong. They kind of fizzled out, and after that, it seemed like the air kind of got let out of the tires. Yeah, you know, you look at that, that first drive, we're able to take the ball from our 25 all the way down to the 31. So you've got first and 10 on the 31 going in and a 20 to 10 ball game. You've got to put points on the board and we weren't able to do that. We had a false start and then we had a quarterback sack, ended up having to punt the football. And, you know, throughout the rest of the half, we, you know, you're sitting there at 27 to 10 for, for a big majority. I mean, going into the fourth quarter, you're still within striking distance and we just were not able to, to put anything together to give our, you know, get that back to that 10 point lead and give ourselves a chance to win a football game. So, you know, it's unfortunate and there's things that we need to go back and continue to work on. 
Rashad Penny is, is so good. What makes him so difficult to handle? Well, you know, now we've all seen him firsthand. You know, the biggest thing about him is he, he's a big, strong, physical back. I mean, he's every bit of six foot. He's every bit of 220. He's got elite speed and physicality. So when you add all those things together, you got a guy who's in the, in the mention for the Heisman Trophy. And he's a great football player. And, you know, hats off to him. He, he's done that to everybody. And, and he took it to us last night. Obviously disappointed with the outcome, but with these difficult circumstances, is this a game where you just kind of throw it away and, and move on? Well, I don't think you throw it away. I think we got to go back and learn from it. I mean, again, our goal is to be, you know, champions of the Mountain West and win the Western Division, and they, they, they are the standard right now, and, and we see what we need to do. To, to I mean, we played a good half of football, and, you know, you give yourself the opportunity leading all the way up to the fourth quarter, and then it just gets away from you at the end. We've got to grow up and be more mature and play better football consistently. But as we move through into you know, these next bunch of games, Air Force and so on, a lot of winnable games out there. So the biggest thing for us is to learn from this and, and to continue to grow and get better. We are one week removed from a tragedy that has really changed our city forever. So what has this week been like and where do we all go from here? Straight ahead in the Rev Zone, we're going to get perspective on the shooting, the way our community responded, the tribute to our first responders, and how all of it has and will impact the Rebel football team. The open discussion just two minutes away. Stick and stay. You're watching the Fox 5 Rev Zone Sports Show, presented by R.C. Willie, your home, your way. This city has been in a state of shock and sorrow all week long. Before the game, UNLV and Southern Nevada took time to pay respects to the lives lost and to honor the first responders who stepped up to save lives. Last Sunday, our community, state, and the entire nation suffered a tragedy that tore at the heart of this city, along with our own Las Vegas Strip. God bless America, my home sweet home. God bless America, my home sweet Now, in light of the events that night, we gather here together using sports to help unite us, to remember those lost, to pray for those still fighting to recover, and to offer sincere gratitude to those who helped others, whether it be an ordinary citizen showing extraordinary courage or those who chose a life-saving profession to heal and serve and to protect. Please join us now in a moment of silence to recognize the 58 souls we have lost, but who will never be forgotten. Thank you. So obviously sports is a big part of our lives. It's your profession. It's, it's involved in my profession. Last night, though, perfect example of sometimes there are other things that are also important. And uh, UNLV played a, a crucial role and did a great job in, in honoring everybody last night. Yeah, I was uh, really happy to the way the athletic department, you know, came together with our community and law enforcement and, you know, first responders. And it was a real collaborative effort. And, you know, it's really proud to be a part of it and, and to watch the way we were able to put something together, you know, in such a short amount of time to honor so many people that are so well deserving, so many heroes out there. And then again, the, the, you know, those, those beautiful people that were lost and aren't here anymore don't get to <clears throat> enjoy those celebrations with us. As a coach, you're also a, a father figure to a lot of these guys, uh, the, especially the ones that aren't from Vegas, they don't have family here in town. I would imagine you guys had a lot of conversations this week as a group and, and individually with players, just trying to let them work through this. They matured a lot this week. No doubt about it. I think we all did, everyone, you know, in the whole city probably did. And, um, you know, when we recruit these kids, one of the biggest selling points is Las Vegas and being a part of this great community. And I think from the day they step foot on campus and become a rebel, they, they embrace the community. They get to know it. They get to love it. And, uh, and I know our guys, regardless of where they were from, were very much affected by it. And, uh, you know, said a lot of prayers, you know, for, the, for everyone who was affected by it. But, no, they, uh, they're all 100 percent, you know, vegans and uh, – you know, again, it's such a tragic event that occurred, and we're so proud of the way the community handled it. And I'm sure proud of your team, just watching those players go through, shake the hands of the first responders and, and see the emotion <laughs> on their faces. 
uh, was it was important as well in terms of the community coming together as one. Yeah, it's all part of the healing process, you know. And they, anytime you can get a, a group of young men to, you know, to be around a lot of police officers and you know firefighters and such, and to watch them shake hands and embrace, that's a beautiful thing in itself. So. You know, and my hats off to San Diego State, the way they participated in it too. They were they had they were great about it, you know, wanting to be a part of it, um, you know, embracing the entire event and being very respectful of it too. So gotta thank Coach Long and his staff for being a part of it as well. We're gonna take a short break right now. When we come back, it is time to break down this week's opponent as we go back to talking football. The Rebels traveling to take on Air Force and the triple option. What's the key to stopping it? And why UNLV has good recent memories in Colorado Springs. That's next as the Red Zone continues. You're watching the Fox 5 Red Zone Sports Show, presented by R.C. Willie, your home, your way. It is time to start looking ahead to this week's game, and it's another tough one as the Rebels travel to Colorado Springs to take on Air Force. Air Force is always a game that makes opposing teams worry. First and foremost is the triple option, something college football players don't see often. And since UNLV hasn't played Air Force since 2014, a lot of the Rebel defenders will be playing against them for the first time. Mix in the fact that Air Force has some speed, especially at quarterback, and there's also some wrinkles to get him out in space. UNLV coaches constantly preach alignment, assignment, technique, fanatical effort. Against Air Force, assignment is the key. Over-pursuing could turn disastrous. Defensively, the Falcons have done a good job in spurts, but over the past couple of years, they've had a tendency to give up big plays. They also have 10 new starters on that side of the ball this season. One other factor to consider is the elevation. Colorado Springs is above 7,000 feet, and there are plenty of signs around to remind opposing teams. Also, there's something traditional and true about the college experience at the academy, pure football at its finest. It is pretty neat when you're able to play on a Saturday afternoon there uh, with a full march on with all the cadets uh, to have either a F-16 or B-1 fly over the top of the stadium and uh, to kick off and uh, be involved in some uh, just really quality competition, but a respectful competition in terms of sportsmanship too. The last time UNLV played at the academy was 2013, a Thursday night in a winter storm that made it to 22 below wind chill. That's the coldest game in Air Force history, but the Rebels dominated the game that night, physically, mentally, and on the scoreboard, and clinched bull eligibility in the process. UNLV wants to keep the mountain mojo going. It begins and ends with the option and trying to defend that. It is not easy for any team to do it. I know you guys have been trying to get some work on it uh, during the bye week and so forth. How concerned are you with your guys and, and how they're going to be able to defend that? Well, it really is, and you said earlier, assignment. You've got to be assignment sound, and the thing is you have to tackle all three phases. So when you're running the triple, you've got to do a great job of uh, dive, quarterback, pitch. You know, So you've got to take all three phases away, and a lot of the stuff that we'll do, we'll practice even without a ball to make sure it's not about where the ball's at. It's about making sure you're eliminating phases as you go. And then the thing that they do so well is getting you to fall asleep and then hit you with a play-action pass. So they've been a lot of tight games. I mean, their record doesn't reflect the type of team they are. They, you know, they, they played Michigan really tough. Lost a really tough game uh, last last night to to Navy and played San Diego State to a really tough game too. So a good football team, um, winnable game. We just got to go out there execute, and then we're gonna have to be explosive on offense and put some pressure on them. Elevation concern you at all, or are we at that point where these athletes are so well conditioned that that's not as much of a factor as it used to be made? You know, there's not a lot you can do about it. You know, I don't. I don't I'm not a big guy on talking about stuff like that. If it's you know elevation, if there's heat, if there's cold, or what it is, what it is. Be tough and just go deal with it. You know, so. Um, um, you know, again, there's not a lot of prep you can do. It's not like we can go up to a mountain and practice. So we're just got to, you know, focus on in and uh, make sure you're rotating guys in and out if it becomes a little bit of an issue. We're going to come back with a very special version of the Rebel Plays of the Week. But as we go to break, here's a look at how other Mountain West teams did over the weekend. Watching the Fox 5 Rev Zone Sports Show, presented by RC Willie, your home, your way. 
Time to get back to work. The next game, always the most important, a big one on the road as you guys try to get the roll, ball rolling again. Yeah, a lot of football left in the season. Excited to go be playing Air Force, and uh, we just got to get back up and get back in the fight. Kickoff is scheduled for 11 o'clock Las Vegas time on Saturday morning. If you're planning on watching on TV, of course, we'll be there to cover it. We'll break it all down for you next week in the Reb Zone. We thank you for joining us inside the Reb Zone this week. We're going to leave you tonight with a very uh, special plays of the week set to a performance by a, a local band. They're called Elvis Monroe. They performed it for us a couple of weeks ago inside of our Gibson showroom, which is here at the Fox 5 Studios, Wrote, written specifically for this incident and reaction. They were at the festival and they're reacting to it in music and we're reacting to it with the Rebels. Good night. Take some time to heal a heart And many things so torn apart It shouldn't be so hard to breathe Take my hand to fly away I'll walk with you into the fray We'll find the strength to set us free And one day at a time Zone Sports Show was presented by RC Willie, your home, your